Well, um, that's a good opportunity today to talk a bit about some of the work we've been doing here in earthquake forecasting. It's been interesting work and the students have had an opportunity to learn a lot in the process of these past four years. Uh, we started looking at this problem, particularly after the January 2010 earthquake in Haiti and the devastation that we observed, and the possibility that there are elements of earthquake that we can use for forecasting that correlated with some of the things I've been doing in my research, which is atmospheric modeling. Uh, we talked with the group at NASA, and they seem to be, at the time, investigating the potential correlation between changes in the atmosphere and, and uh, tectonic plate movements. So the first set of data we looked at was uh, data from a French satellite called Demeter, D-E-M-E-T-E-R, was a, a group out of the University of Orléans in France, uh, Professor Michel Pao and his group were working on collecting data around faults uh, with these satellites, basically measuring the concentration of electron density uh, along their, their flight path. When I talk about electron density, I mean the number of free charges in the atmosphere from 100 to about 1,000 kilometers above the surface of Earth that uh, you can measure with the probe of some sort that's sticking out of that satellite. So when we became aware of these data, and based on the fact that I was already investigating this potential correlation, correlation between the changes in the atmosphere and, and movement of tectonic plates, we uh, started working with this group, and we were given access to some of their data over a four-year period. Uh, one of the first senior theses that was done uh, as part of platform for investigating this was done by one of our students, Mr. Michael O'Brien. He looked at first how to pass this data on a daily basis, but particularly how to collect this data in terms of averages over a month. In other words, you'll, you'll take a month of data uh, over Haiti, and you'll kind of look at how the number of charges in the atmosphere changes along these faults, fault lines as the satellite were orbiting in space. And we did that for many months, like six or seven months leading to the earthquake. And it was interesting to see visually as we try to display maps of the monthly average variation of these number of charges as a function of latitude. When we looked at latitude specifically over where Haiti sit, there were very distinctive changes in this number of charges as the earthquake approaches. And it became more and more and more evident leading to the month of the earthquake where, where actually the number of charge peaked. So that was an interesting result. Interesting in the sense that it gave us the first um, hint that this correlation is, is possible. But there were problems with, with that data because this satellite demeter was out of orbit and we could no longer get that kind of data. So we had to kind of think about how to move forward with the research. Um, at the time we stumble, I would say, on another professor from the University of Hokkaido, Japan, called Professor uh, Kose Koseku Heki, Kosuke Heki, Professor Kosuke Heki, um, had apparently been investigating how GPS data could be used to get the derived parameter of electron density called the total electron content, or TEC. Uh, he had shown that if you you can use the change in phase in GPS satellite to measure a uh, number of charges along the line of sight between a receiver and a satellite. And although this wasn't electron density per se, it was enough information that we could use to continue with the research. And that became senior thesis for our next student, uh, Joseph, Mr. Joseph Hammerstrom. He started, uh, so we got in touch with Professor Heckey, he gave us some code. And we started actually using this code to develop ways of looking at this potential correlation, but in a way different than Professor Heckey. Instead of looking at points, uh, changes in points of TEC, we decided to display a map of the TEC as a function of latitude, longitude, and see if we can observe over a certain window if there were changes in the number of charges in the atmosphere or as the earthquake approaches. And it was remarkable what we saw. You could see that as the earthquake approached, you had a, a, a loss or an absence of electron density. And suddenly this absence was followed up by 
a huge gain in electron density. So you have this absence of electron density, huge gain of electron density that became very distinctive as you got closer to the earthquake. Um, so, so definitely this was encouraging, but there were problems also with that uh, approach because at the time when we started looking at GPS data, we looked at the data with all of its biases. A lot of biases in GPS data, uh, biases coming from, elect from the orbit of the satellite, the travel through the ionosphere and the troposphere, uh, problem with the receivers, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And if we were going to be serious about investigating this, uh, this potential correlation, we had to remove these biases. So that would become the thesis of our next student, uh, uh, John Hughes started looking at ways of removing all biases from the data before displaying. And we spent a long time trying to find out how to do this. There's about maybe two laboratories in the world that can do this work effectively, uh, both, uh, both from MIT, and we tried to inquire from them if we could buy with our code, and that was impossible. So we took it on to develop our own code. We got together with a group in China, Professor Jin Lao, uh, from the University of China uh, gave us some some start with pieces of code that we could use and then we set on the next year to develop a code that could remove the biases. So we did remove all the biases and we displayed the data and the results were really remarkable. Not only could we see correlation between changes in the atmosphere and approach of earthquake, but we could also show that these changes correlated well with where the epicenter were. As a matter of fact, when the earthquake hit, it's distinctively permanent, the kind of changes we can see in, 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 the, in the atmosphere as a result of, of, of the earthquake. So it's been three years of looking at this problem and three years of kind of making steps moving forward. And now we've reached a point where we have enough confidence that, of that correlation that we want to take that work one huge step further. And what we want to do right now is kind of participate in the larger discussion about what earthquake forecasting is going to be. Most people think that no single parameter is going to be able to tell you definitively that an earthquake is going to, going to occur. And I agree, there's been various methods that, that have been investigated, we call them precursor signals, that seem to arrive much before an earthquake that can tell us about these changes. So the proposal uh, over this sum last summer got together with a group of 10 students and we set on to develop what we call a data collection, simulation, and fusion platform of precursor data. And the idea is to take most of the signals that are known to have earthquake forecasting information in them, including those that we've investigated, to take all of them, bring them into one platform, assimilate them, meaning cleaning them, making them uh, um, usable, and then fusing them, that is intersecting them so that out of 15, 20 parameters, we want one single parameter that's telling us about earthquake forecasting. And the idea is if one signal doesn't tell us the truth, two signals don't tell us the truth, but eventually these 10 signals put together have to be telling us something that's stronger than one signal or two signal at all. And that's the, the, the path that we're treading on right now. So develop a, a, a forecasting platform that can assimilate a lot of signals and then use that for earthquake forecasting and deploy this platform in places that where earthquakes are prominent starting with Haiti.